And we are back with part four of this week's Shabbat services. Shabbat Shalom, everyone. It is November 14th, 2020, Kesvan 275781. We were just reading from the half Torah um, how Adonijah, one of King David's sons, um, kind of overstepped his bounds. He was not to, uh, he was not the one that was appointed to be heir after David. Um, same as when we look at Abraham, um, no one but Isaac was appointed to be heir um, from, um, from Abraham. That was God's choice, and God chose Solomon. So Adonijah, Adonijah actually overstepped his bounds. His father was old, and um, he decided he was going to take over the kingdom, kind of, kind of a little bit, um, not quite as bad as what Absalom had tried to do, um, and that's a whole nother story. But Adonijah kind of decided he was going to be king. Um, but that was not so, and not what God had planned. It wasn't in God's will. So now, as we left off in the last part, um, King Solomon was declared. Solomon was declared king. He was anointed as king. Um, Zadok the Kohen actually anointed him. Um, and there's a lot of noise being made because they're saying long, they're shouting, the people are shouting, long live, live King Solomon. They're dancing, they're celebrating, um, they're playing flutes, they're making a lot of noise, and the ground is shaking at all the noise that is being made. And now Adonijah and all the guests who were with him heard it just as they finished eating. When Joab heard the sound of the shofar, he said, why is the city in an uproar? While he was still speaking, behold, Jonathan, son of Abiathar, the Kohen came, and Adonijah said, Come in, for you are a valiant man, and surely bringing good news. But Jonathan answered and said to Adonijah, No, for our lord, King David, has made Solomon king. Also the king has sent with him Zadok, the Kohen, Nathan, the prophet, Benaiah, son of Jehoiada, the Cherethites, and the Pelethites. And they had him ride on the king's mule. Zedek the Kohen and Nathan the prophet have anointed him king at Gihon. From there they have come up rejoicing so that the city is in an uproar. That's the noise that you heard. After Solomon has taken his seat on the royal throne, moreover the king's courtiers, came to bless our lord King David, saying, May God make the name of Solomon better than your name and his, name, and his throne greater than your throne. Then the king bowed down on on the bed. Furthermore, the king said, Blessed be Adonai, God of Israel, who this day has given one to sit on my throne while my eyes are seeing it. Trembling, all the guests of Adonijah got up and each went his own way. Adonijah was afraid of Solomon, so he arose, went and grasped the horns of the altar. So it was reported to Solomon, Behold, Adonijah is afraid of King Solomon. For look, he grasped the horns of the altar, saying, Let King Solomon swear to me first that he will not put his servant to death with a sword. Then Solomon said, If he shows himself a worthy man, then not a hair of him will fall to the ground. But if wickedness is found in him, he shall die. So King Solomon sent, and they brought him down from the altar. He came and prostrated himself before King Solomon, and Solomon said to him, Go to your home. And that's the end of that chapter. Very interesting. Um, but the heir that God selected was the heir that was anointed and appointed. Um, just as with Abraham, Isaac was the second patriarch. So to recap, this week's Haftar describes an aging King David echoing um, this week's Torah reading, which mentions that Abraham was old and advanced in days. So, so, so was King David was aging um, and also was cold. And Ab Abishag, uh, a Shunammite, was recruited to be his nurse. Um, so again, Adonijah overstepped his bounds. Um, and King David 
made sure that Solomon was um, took over his throne uh, while he was yet alive uh, because he knew what God had planned and he honored God. So that is a quick recapping of the half tour. We're going to go into the Brit Kadasha and this week's portion of the Brit Kadasha is 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 50 to 57. Now I say this, brothers and sisters, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, and what decays cannot inherit what does not decay. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last shofar. For the shofar will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and will be changed. For this corruption must put on incorruptibility, and this mortal must put on immortality. But when this corruptible will have put on incorruptibility, and this mortal will have put on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that it is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O death, is your sting? Now the sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the Torah. But thanks be to God who keeps giving us the victory through our Lord Yeshua, the Messiah. Therefore, I'm going to finish this out. Therefore, my dearly loved brethren, be steadfast and movable, always excelling in the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. So this also speaks of a rapture here. Um, the blowing of the shofar. Remember, we, they were blowing the shofar for Solomon. Um, things were changing there. Uh, there was a changing of the guard, so to speak. Um, Solomon was becoming king. Um, here in this passage, this sounding of the shofar is the changing of us, uh, you know, into that incorruptible. Um, the dead in Christ shall rise. We shall not sleep and when they talk about sleep that means die you know being being sleeping like you know being dead um and we shall not sleep but we shall all be changed in the moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last so far the last so far blast and death has no victory over those who have eternal life and have been promised eternal life. So we also talk about the promise of the heirs. We are heirs, joint heirs uh, in the kingdom with Yeshua if you are born again and saved. So that's a promise to us. When we think about the promises, there was a promise to Abraham for Isaac, and there was a promise to David for Solomon. And our Father has promised us to be joint heirs with Yeshua um, in the future too. So there is a promise, and we're talking about being heirs. So there is the connection with that as well. So we're going to recap this week's Shabbat um, with the Torah, real quick recapping. Now in the Torah, we were talking about um, Sarah uh, passing on. Um, there was now a burial place, so there was a first land purchase that is ever mentioned uh, about, you know, that Abraham had done. Um, Abraham became very concerned with his heir, his promised heir, because that seed needed to move forward, so he needed to make sure that Isaac had a wife, but he wanted an appropriate wife that was, that would have, you know, met um, uh, approval from Adonai. And he did not want um, Isaac to marry any of the Canaanite women. So Rebecca is brought onto the scene, and Isaac has taken her as a wife. And then we talked about the Haftar portion, um, where King David is aged, and he, and the concern becomes what happens after he dies. What about the promise? Um, that Adonai has made, and um, that promise was almost um, 
stolen by um, someone that was not promised to have the, you know, the, the kingdom to be on the throne, to be heir to the throne. Um, so that was dealt with and the rightful heir um, was put in place before King David died. So when we look at the Brit Kadasha snapshot also, um, we are looking at um, the fact that we have been promised to be joint heirs with Yeshua. Um, and this also, this section that we read in the Brit Kadasha also indicates the rapture. So um, that is about all that I'm going to say about this week's Torah, Half Torah, and Brit Kadasha portions. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for your word and we thank you for your message this week and the lesson on errors and promises and covenants that you have made and how important they are. And we look forward to the promise um, that you have made to us, your children, uh, your born again children through Yeshua. Um, we look so forward to that promise of being joint heirs with Yeshua in the in your kingdom. Um, and we're so honored to be blessed by you, Father God. You are an awesome awesome God. There is no one like you. We, we bless your mighty name. You are the great I am. There is none other. Never was and never will be. We love you, Father. We bless you. We honor you. We worship and adore you. In the mighty name of Yeshua, Jesus, amen and amen. And I would like to open this up to something very important, and that is an altar call. It is something the Lord put on my heart to do um, when we began doing the ministry online, um, when we were first like texting uh, teachings and um, we were posting, I should say, teachings. Um, the Lord put on my heart um, not only to do prayer requests and take prayer requests, but to actually do these altar calls to give the opportunity for people to give their heart, give their soul, repent and come to the Lord, be born again and be saved. You only have one life to live once you close your eyes and that's it. Once you take your last breath, Whatever you have decided in this lifetime will be your fate for eternity. So if you have rejected God, if you've rejected Yeshua as your Messiah, you are not born again. Um, unfortunately, you're not going to make it to heaven. You don't get to heaven by good works, by just being a good person. By I mean, those are very good qualities, mind you, that you know we need to strive for in this fleshly existence, but that's not the way you get to heaven. Um, Yeshua said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. He specifically came here, laid down his life to redeem sin forever. So in the agony that he went through would be all for naught if you had many paths to get to heaven. So the world would tell you there's many, many roads to heaven, many ways to get to God. There's this God, there's that God. No, there's only one God. Buddha can't get you there. Allah can't get you there. Muhammad can't get you there. You can't get yourself there. Yeshua is the way, the truth, and the life. Salvation can only be achieved through the Lord himself, Jesus Christ, Yeshua. Hamashiach and salvation is deliverance from sins and their consequences. Yeshua took all the sins of the world with him when he laid his very own life down on the cross so that the world could be redeemed of sin forever through his shed blood. And through his shed blood, we have the victory over the enemy who sends all these deceitful, lying 
things, such as there's many paths to heaven. That is a bold-faced lie from the pit of hell. Not true. Not true at all. Romans chapter 3, verse 23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin are death. And that means eternal death and separation from our Creator, from Father God. And that separation is not a pleasant separation. Um, hell is not going to be a picnic. It is going to be a daily torture. And um, those that think it's going to be a picnic are in for a huge rude awakening. And that's very sad because the Lord God Almighty did not create hell for his creation. It was meant for the devil and his minions and his demons and the fallen ones. But yet there's a lot of people that are out there that worship the very defeated foe that's going to hell. And when you're if you're there with him, you're going to look at him and say, is this what got me here? And you're going to have many regrets. So I am pleading with you at this moment. This is the time. This is the time to look at this very unstable world around you. Uh, do you want to take your last breath and not know? Uh, but I tell you, you will know. If you have not been born again, if you have not accepted Yeshua as your Lord and Savior, you are not going to be in heaven. That's a fact. Romans chapter 5 verse 8 says, But God commanded his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Yeshua died for us. Before Yeshua came, there had been a sacrificial system that was placed um, to cover sin but it never completely removed it when Yeshua gave his life he was able to do that because he was completely perfect he was the most perfect man to ever walk the face of this earth um, he was without sin he was without blame he was spotless so that made him able to redeem us because of being spotless and sinless. Now, yes, the devil tried to tempt him to, to sin, to, to go against what God's will was. But Yeshua knew the word. He was. The word became flesh. So he could use the word as a sword, which is one of the, one of the, the, battle gear that we have when we put on the full armor of God. The sword is the word of God. It is so important for you to know the word of God. It is one of the very most powerful weapons of, of our warfare. First John chapter 1 verse 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Yeshua is the only one who can forgive you of sins. No, no man behind a confessional booth can forgive you of sins. He is human and in the flesh just as you are. He can't forgive you of anything. He doesn't have the power to do so. Yeshua died for that. Turn to Yeshua. You don't need to go to anyone. But go to Yeshua. When Yeshua died on that cross, that veil was torn from top to bottom, allowing us to go to the throne of the throne room ourself. Um, so if you have never accepted Yeshua as your Lord and Savior, and you wish to do so now, I am going to encourage you to say this prayer with me now. Father God, I come to you today as sinner, and I'm hearing all of this, and I realize that I really do need a Savior. I need Yeshua, because I don't want to go to hell. I want to be with you in eternity. I want to see the family and friends that have passed on before me and are there waiting for me. I don't want to go to hell and be separated from them. I don't want to be separated from you. 
So I'm, I'm understanding now that no, there are not many paths to heaven. There is only one. And he is the very one person that came here to die for me. And I thank you, Yeshua, for that. I thank you for what you have done. And I'm asking you to forgive me of my sins. To help me to avoid from sinning again. I repent today of my sins. And I turn to you, Yeshua, to be my Lord and Savior. To rule and reign in my heart for the rest of my life. I believe that you are the Messiah. I believe that you came to earth for the very purpose of redeeming me from my sins and to save the whole world of their sins. I believe Yeshua died on a cross. I believe he was buried. I believe he rose again. He defeated death. He defeated the enemy. I believe he's sitting at the right hand of the Father, very much alive. I believe he is also coming again to rule and reign. I want to be there with him. So I invite you into my life from this day forward to come and rule and reign in my life. I declare today that Yeshua, Jesus Christ, is my Lord and Savior now and forever. I declare now, Yeshua, I understand you are the King of Kings. You are the Lord of Lords. I also thank you, Yeshua, for what you have done to save me and to save the whole world through you giving up your life for me and all of mankind. I accept the gift of salvation that you were offering, the precious gift of eternal life with you and the Father. I declare you Lord of my life from this day forward to rule and reign in my heart forever. Please send your Holy Spirit to live inside of me, to guide me in all your ways for the rest of my life. I believe through you and you alone that I am saved. I am healed by your stripes. I am healed and delivered from sin and the consequences of sin. I am set free. I am born again. I am a child of God. I am a member of the family of God now. And I believe through you and you alone. I am healed now and healthy of mind, body and soul in Yeshua, Jesus, precious name. Amen and amen. And if you've said that prayer with me, Welcome to the family of God. I'm going to pause it now and come back for our final part of this week's Shabbat service. And we're going to talk about what happens now that you are born again and you are saved. <laughs> 